look at that thing. Just stare at it for a moment with me. Do you understand what that is? Like, yeah, yeah, it's CGI of a black hole. No. Do you really understand what that is? Okay, let's scrap the CGI. In recent years, there's been a worldwide effort between nations called Event Horizon Telescope. They're using a technique called interferometry to combine all their radio telescopes into one giant Earth-sized aperture to get the angular resolution and the exposure and the spectrum sensitivity all just right to capture this picture. That's right, a real picture proving that the CGI was accurate. That thing on your screen right now really exists out there in space right now. So one more time, do you understand what it is? If you don't, I'll tell you. It is a terrifying, world-destroying monster. In almost every measure, it defies human comprehension. Just for size, we are talking several more orders of magnitude beyond comprehension than the solar system already was. It's so easy to get lost in the numbers and lose track. Like, wait, which order of magnitude are we on again? Or what's our universe zoom level when looking at this celestial body? It's very tricky to picture in your mind. There are some videos out there to help, like this one from Kurtzkasad, which helped me. I really encourage you to watch it, or to try out this simulator called Space Engine, or something. Because if you can hold on and keep track long enough, and maybe even just for an instant, really picture what size of thing we're talking about, it makes you stop and inspires silence. And that's just size, let alone its power and mind-bending nature. You are literally seeing both sides of it at once, because the light from the back orbits around it to the front. The full math and physics of what's happening here is an active frontier of cutting-edge PhD-level research. This is one of nature's deepest mysteries, theorized on a blackboard over a century ago and now we can see the real thing. This puts a different perspective on Psalm 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God. Sometimes the word glory makes us picture like purple robes and tall castles. No, no, no. This object, which remember, was invented and created by God, then discovered by brilliant scientists. This object speaks to a very different kind of glory. Forget nuclear weapons. This is a funnel of warping space-time that converts matter straight to plasma. This is way, way, way more destructive than the heart of a nuclear bomb. It's the consuming fire kind of glory, the kind of raw power that could vaporize all of humanity in a nanosecond. It's the kind of glory that sends a chill down your spine and makes you feel small. It makes me remember those words again from Psalm 8. What is man that you are mindful of him? Nothing. That's the plain and simple answer. Before the awesome, horrifying might of that tiny glowing speck in God's cosmos, we are nothing. And yet, even the closest one among billions in the universe, God chose to put it not just at a safe distance, but at a distance so mind-crushingly far away that in all of our hopes and dreams in science fiction, in all the ages of the world, we can never get anywhere near it. The sheer size and distance of the galaxy is like a child's playpen preventing us from poking at the electrical outlet. God put this world-destroying monster where we could see it, but where it could never, ever hurt us. So in the character of God, we have that terrifying majesty paired with a love so deep and tender that it brings a tear to the eye. And that barely scratches the surface of biblical theology. In the book of Romans, it says, Behold the kindness and severity of God. <laughs> Behold indeed.